today, joined now by Hall of Fame writer Rick Bozich from WDRB.com. Uh, Rick, uh, I know you were w- at least watching the game last night, um, and you know all the all the specifics that, that, that went into this. And this is not unprecedented. Back in the days of night, um, I, 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 I was shocked by a lot of people's reactions. Some of them questioning. Mike Woodson doing this. And I'm like, what in the hell is wrong with you people? Uh, what coach with any integrity would not do this? Uh, so that's not an option. He, he didn't do this. Those five players did that, but that was a little surprising, uh, but it is what it is. I, to see your floor leader, the guy that you really need be one of these, that has to be extraordinarily disappointing for Mike Woodson. Um, you know, I look to kind of go through the others. Durs, I, I keep hearing, you know, he's been in and out of the doghouse this year. I've heard, but I don't know that, but I've heard this and that. We haven't seen him play a lot. That tells you a lot. Christian Lander, I haven't seen him play a lot. That tells you something. Um, Tamar Bates, that's got to be disappointing. Again, uh, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Probably would have done it. He's a, an 18 year old freshman. Um, but man, wrong. I, I just. Surely to God, I cannot imagine having that lack of sense, but they did. And it was a huge mistake that cost Indiana. Um, Then we'll talk about Trace Jackson Davis should have helped Indiana overcome that and didn't. So where would you like to start, man? There's just a plate full of stuff. Well, I guess I'll start with suspensions because like you, you know, you start hearing about it a few hours before the game and second or third time we've gone through this this year. And one time I remember there was a report that a bunch of guys weren't going to play, and it turned out to be only – I think it was only Bates missed the game at Notre Dame, right, because he was had to go home for a funeral or something. <laughs> um, so you wait and see, you know, from the actual people who show up at the arena to see how much of it is true. Um, what's particularly disturbing about this one is uh, this isn't like a November game or December game. This is mid-February with a team – that has to know it hasn't secured a spot in the NCAA tournament yet with a team that just played a terrible second half against Illinois and knows it has Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Ohio State coming up. I mean, this is a game Indiana had to have. And for guys to either not be aware of that or disregard that is got to be particularly up, should be upsetting to the rest of the players who are all in. And it has to be um, – upsetting to the coaching staff, particularly to Mike Woodson, because three of them are guys that he brought in, Durr, Johnson, and Bates. I mean, Stewart was brought there by the previous staff, as was Lander. Um, and another thing that's just mildly interesting to me is it's five guys. They room two to a room. That means one guy went out and his roommate stayed in. <laughs> oh, wow. We'll never know who it is, but that means one guy went out, and if that's what if it was a curfew thing, that means somebody said, no, I'm not doing it. You've, uh, got, you've given me something to seek out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't that right? I mean, they ruined it. Yeah, room, I so. did not think of that, man. Uh, yeah. I, ironically, normally is not the case. I happened to stay at the same hotel uh, last night. So I saw the team yesterday. And this I did not know. This is before I knew anything. We were getting ready to go to the arena. They were doing the same. And um, everything seemed normal. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't know anything at that time. It was kind of weird, but yeah, it, uh, it's just not this team. We, there have been times where they didn't win games because we didn't think that they were tough enough or this and that. And this just continues to kind of go with that is like, how important is winning to them? Um, and again, Xavier Johnson way old enough to know better. Um, but it's not like he came here with a Steve Alford reputation. Uh, but man, it's like you just, you, you just nailed a point I hadn't thought about. This is the critical time of season where Indiana is making or breaking their season. They only have seven games left now. Uh, they're still fighting to get into the tournament. They're in, they were in position to be in there, but they can easily just waltz right out of it. And doing that is an easy way to do it. Yeah, and I don't think the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee says, well, they lost that game because five guys were suspended. We're not going to count that as much. If guys are injured, they might do that. But if it's 
guys not playing because they broke team rules, you're not going to get cut any slack because of that. And, you know, Michigan State's lost at least two in a row, I think. And then they go up there on Saturday. Uh, they lost at home, I think, last night. Didn't they lose at home to Wisconsin? I'm pretty sure it was at home. And they had got blown out by Rutgers the previous game. Uh, and the other thing, you know, I'll, I'll, get, I'll agree with you that I did some dumb things when I was in college. Uh, I wasn't on a team. Who did? Um, and had an obligation to my teammates, you know, who are trying to do all the right things to play. The other thing I'll say is you have to give credit. And you were there to watch, you know, how engaged were the other guys on the bench? They only showed it. They all seemed to be sitting together. Um, some of them were getting up on a lot of different plays, but I, I, it, it's a matter of how contrite, I guess, they are, or how much they realize what they did, how much it, it cost this team. And I was a little bit surprised that Woodson said he hadn't decided how long the suspension was going to be. He was going to think about it on the flight home. Um, that, that I think it's just so new to him, I guess. I mean, right. it happened, and he wasn't anticipating it and hadn't – dealt with this in mass and I right. and knows how critical this is going forward. Um, right. He did say if the guys aren't going to do it, they got They got to go. I mean, that's what he did say that. So he, came well, he said, I wants to have guys here to do that or not. They can go, but he, he that came message, up under coach tonight, and I'm sure it's been mentioned that he was on that team in 1978 that played in Alaska, that Tommy Baker of Jeffersonville, Don Cox, Bobby, Broadway, Bob Kravitz brought that up earlier when he was on. Jim Roberson, who was a member of the 1976 national championship team, he got he got booted. I mean, that was it. They were done. Uh, but I think, and I, I had an interaction with somebody last night on, on Twitter, that I think that there were other players who were involved that just got suspended. Those three guys got kicked off. But I, there were other players in the team who just got suspended and came back, and Woodson might have been one of them. Actually... I did. I don't know that he even got suspended. I heard that he was involved with that, but didn't get suspended. I can't remember. Yeah. As soon as you said it, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, but, but yes, yeah. it, it, it's all the same. But um, it, it's never good. But it, it, it does that show that there's any cracks with within this team still? And I'm not trying to create that, but. It's when you have that cohesive, the, the cohesion, uh, this kind of stuff doesn't happen. You have leadership that says, dude, guys, y'all can't do this, especially with the fact that you just brought up there was a split in one room. Um, it, where is the dedication to, to winning, especially the younger players being a part of the program? Tamar Bates wanted to come here, wanted to play for Mike Woodson. Uh, and so that's, that's not going to make Mike Woodson happy. No, I mean, the split is in terms of guys who had the self-discipline to realize that you can do this in the end of March or mid-March or early April. This You've gone through all the summer conditioning. You've gone through all these practices. You've gone through all these games during the season, and the goal is to get to the NCAA tournament, and now you're doing something stupid that is going to make it more difficult for the, for the whole team and the other guys. Uh, to get to the NCAA tournament, it's it's pretty selfish and self centered and immature. Um, and you know, eighteen to twenty four year olds are more mature than the rest of us, and we're a lot of us are immature. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how Woodson moves forward because I I, I listened to you know a little bit of what you were saying earlier, and that uh, and I tweeted it last night and it got over a thousand likes. Is that regardless of whatever happens, Trey Galloway showed that he needs to be out there. I mean. He, yeah, he had some turnovers, but he forces the action. He gives him a second ball handler who can attack. He plays on defense. I thought the second hook and hold call was bogus. I thought his arm got trapped by, by Nance under the rim. Uh, he competes, and they're not getting a ton out of Stewart and or Cop. So, and, and if it would be me, which Stewart would come out of the lineup because this is his second suspension. You know, there's got to be some kind of – it sends a bad message if you have a guy who does all the right things and comes in and performs, and then he goes back to the bench, and a guy who's now sat out twice for things that have happened off the court keeps his starting position. I, I think that would be the wrong message, and I, I think messaging is a big part of what Mike Woodson was trying to achieve last night. And well, not only that, I mean, and you can't—I I guess you can play in this part into it, but 
his production has just been so inconsistent as well. And I think that maybe that has something to do with this because you asked about uh, the, the demeanor of, of the other guys. When, I, when this first started happen, and I got that text and I'm like, so I, I'm first thing I do is start looking around who, who's out here, who's not, because it was during shoot around and I'm counting and looking. And I'm like, okay, I think everybody's out here. Uh, and then that's when I saw Parker Stewart sitting on the bench, just sitting along the bench and his candy stripes and his pullover and just looking all sulking. Uh, every now and then Durr would come over and sit with him. Somebody else would come over and sit with him. So I'm like, all right, it's, it's, it's Parker Stewart. Uh, everyone else is on the floor the whole time. He, he was just really removed. It makes me wonder one of two things, either has this really impacted him or is there going to be more serious consequences for him? Because this was not his first run in. And I know right. he had mitigating circumstances, but that only goes so far. And this is not the first time it's happened. He didn't participate with the team at all last year, which was a little uh, uh, befuddling because uh, Archie Miller desperately needed him. And I think we'd have ran his grandma in there if she could have hit a shot. Um, so that uh, that whole thing, I don't know what his future with Indiana is. It makes you start to wonder about Christian Lander's future with Indiana. Um, Jalen Hood Shafino just named uh, a, a five star by Rivals 150 um, coming in next season. That, you know, he's got, he, he knows that. And the other guys that are coming in. So um, there's, there, there, there's potential change coming to this roster, not based on this, but this is kind of maybe showing an underlying issue. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a commitment to what the team goal is. The team goal is, you know, to get to the NCAA tournament. And when you're doing stuff that is against team rules and the coach has to respond in a very public manner, I mean, that became a, a bit of a national story last night where you're watching, you know, a halftime show on another network and they're talking about, it. and you know, this – Michigan State's playing Wisconsin and Purdue's playing Illinois and Kentucky's playing South Carolina and Arkansas upsets Auburn and Indiana suspended five players. I mean, that brings uh, negative publicity to the to the program that I, I don't think that they need at this point. And then it extends the losing streak to two games, as I said, with three top 20 teams coming up in a row. I mean, they've got to win one of the next three. Can you imagine if, we're, if they lose the next two, which I guess in Michigan State and Wisconsin – the conversation we're having next uh, Wednesday morning is going to be from uh, looking at Indiana fans filing into the panic room. Yeah, and they they put the onus on themselves to now that were had they just simply won that game, they could have chalked it out in essence. Um, now they can't. They've got to find something to make up for this because they're out of leeway. They still have to go to places like Minnesota, which is tricky. Uh, yeah. And this team has not shown me that that's that's they're as susceptible to losing that game as any other. Uh, and then the three ranked teams that they have to face next, if they were to lose those, you talk about your confidence just going into the toilet at the end of the season. You, you could look at a team that was destined for the NCAA for the first time in, in five years or however long it's been, six years, to the NIT. And that would be just a big hammer on top of the program for Mike Woods and what he's had done up until this point, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's, and the reason I think people default to that kind of thinking is they saw it happen last year. Uh, they lost what the last six in a row last year and just um, played They're in a position where they might've made the tournament, but they just collapsed and didn't make the tournament. So um, they got to win one of the next three and two of them are on the road. And the road games, I believe are Michigan state, Ohio state, Minnesota, and Purdue. So Minnesota is the most winnable one in the group. And as you mentioned, that's, that's a 50, 50 game at best. And then the home games are what Wisconsin Rutgers and there's one Maryland, other. Maryland. Maryland. Yeah. Right. So they got to win two of those and maybe three uh, because, you know, they're, they're not in the bubble yet, but they can see it from where they're sitting. 